Nvidia's gaming laptop, Intel dropping their prices, and you gotta upgrade. Get off the old cards. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Wednesday, May 7th, 2025. And again, just a reminder that this Friday we have our giveaway announcements going on for the PCs that we're giving away over on our Twitch channel. So come and join us over there, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech, twitch.tv forward slash UFD music. Would love to have you there. We got a system with an RTX 5090. It's got an AMD processor, but according to reports at Computex, we're likely gonna get a new partnership, NVIDIA and MediaTek. They've already technically partnered in the automotive sector, but reports are that the N1 ARM chip for Windows may see its debut happening at Computex. This is not the first time we've heard this reported. This is actually something that was alluded to months ago. People were saying Computex was the time for the unveiling of this, but now it's becoming a little bit more clear, especially since there are keynotes from both companies on back-to-back -back days at Computex, and details are coming out that likely this is gonna be the time for the announcement, potentially not release of the N1 or the N1X, which are supposed to be the laptop chips that have NVIDIA graphics, but an ARM processor, so that NVIDIA can start selling their own stuff in the laptop market and not have to depend on Intel or AMD for making any of that happen. Which really reminds me of the days of like, uh, the NVIDIA Shield portable Shield tablet that they had. We picked one of these up recently for a video that we're working on. I love the Shield portable back in the day. This is essentially a Nintendo Switch in its hardware, right? It's got an ARM processor and an NVIDIA GPU, which is exactly what the Switch does, but it's running Android. But instead now, hopefully we're gonna get one that's running Windows, which is fine, I guess, when it comes to making sure that it's compatible with games. Uh, portable, Shield portable was great for streaming games via Moonlight or something. But it's just nice to, see NVIDIA going back to the past with, with all of this. And you know who else is going back to the past with a modern twist? Today's video sponsor. You've heard of sleeper builds, but no one will be sleeping on this build from today's sponsor, Silverstone. This is one of the most highly anticipated cases to come out in 2025. What started out as an April Fool's joke in 2023 is now a real product that you can buy thanks to numerous retro loving PC enthusiasts all over the world. The styling is based on the popular late 80s desktop PC with functional flip down five and a quarter inch drive bay covers and front IO covers that mimic the look of floppy drives. Drives, if you Zoomers out there even know what that is. Although the styling is old school, the rest of the chassis is thoroughly modern with USB-C ports, the ability to accommodate most ATX motherboards, PSUs, and mid-range to high-end graphics cards. There's plenty of filtered intake vents so that everything can run nice and cool while you're booting up Tetris on some seriously overkill hardware. If you want to make your friends think you're still running Windows 1.0, grab a super cool FLP01 from Silverstone today via the link in the description below. Thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring and giving us this case. I I'm gonna love this PC. Well, an RTX 5060 can definitely fit in the FLP01 from Silverstone, very likely, unless you get a massive one that has an extra stupid long cooler, but Nvidia finally announcing that May 19th is the date that the 5060 is dropping and it's popping up on retailers. You have Best Buy showing off the PNY 5060 going for the MSRP of 299. Obviously, there's no stock yet. There's no indication that these prices are gonna hold. Also, some other 5060s are more expensive than that. We just now know the release date because NVIDIA hadn't had officially confirmed that up until yesterday. And NVIDIA hasn't officially confirmed this either, but the reports are coming out strong in the back channels that it, the RTX 5090D is DOA in China. Reports are that NVIDIA is not shipping any of these graphics cards to China in Q2, specifically because of issues that are happening between NVIDIA and the US government with export restrictions and that the 5090D is just not going going to happen. They will have to cancel all of the orders for people who want the 5090D in that region of the world, which is strange. Obviously, the 5090D was created in order to specifically sell in the Chinese market, very much like the 4090D was. And now it looks like that's not going to happen moving forward. And they might have to concoct something a little bit different. 5090Ds. Sorry. Let's see if uh, Reese can make up for what I just did. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well this Wednesday and we have a double feature of Corsair deals today so I'll jump straight into them with the Corsair Void RGB Elite Wireless Gaming Headset which you can pick up for a very nice price of only $69.99 making it $40 off but then next up we have the Corsair IQ Link H100i LCD 240mm AIO CPU liquid cooler going for only 
$132.07, making it $67.92 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I actually don't know if you talked about this, but Intel's got a deal going on with their core ultra CPUs. It looks like they're seeing the writing on the sales wall that they're not doing so hot. So prices are coming down. The Ultra 7 200 series getting price drops of up to 25%, making it so that the Core Ultra 7 265K is actually not a terrible price for all of the hardware that you're getting packed into it. So the 265K looks like it's gonna be costing 299, which is $100 off, or the 265KF, in case you don't need integrated graphics, is down to 284. Those are both $100 off. Now the issue is, this is the suggested retailer price. It might not actually end up like that, but if you go to Amazon or Newegg, you can see that the 265K, 20 cores up to 5.5 gigahertz, is going for 295 bucks, 300 bucks for a 20 core CPU, in case you need it for multitasking and all that stuff, doesn't seem to be a bad deal. But for a lot of people, what seemed to be a bad deal was Asetek's stranglehold on the AIO liquid cooler market, because you might not know this, but there was some politics going on behind the scenes with Asetek owning the patent on a very traditional method when it came to liquid coolers. This was something that a lot of other companies tried to come up with their own liquid cooler, and then Asetek would sue them for violating their patent, created a whole situation where very few companies actually made their own designs because they would have to reconfigure how the pump would be placed because that was violating Asetek's patent, or they had to pay a licensing fee over to Asetek in order to be able to do it. However, as of yesterday, that patent has now expired because it was a 20-year patent in the country that it was filed, so that means that Asetek no longer holds that patent for these liquid coolers and potentially means that their design can be used in more companies' coolers moving forward without them having to pay the licensing fee. But according to reports, uh, they've already seen that this is going to have a significant impact on their business. There's been previous reports that Asetek was already kind of financially struggling, and now there's details coming out that a third-party company has indicated that they want to buy out Asetek's cooling business, especially because it's not going to be as valuable as it was previously. And some of the people that we knew who worked at Asetek are no longer with the company, likely due to all of these changes that are happening moving forward. But hopefully it means that things will get better for the consumer because companies will be able to use this design and then also iterate upon it and we could have more competition in the liquid cooling seat. And we're gonna need some changes going on in the GPU scene in case you're on a GTX 900 series, a GTX 1000 series, or you got one of them Titan Vs, you need to make a plan to upgrade from your graphics card ASAPP because NVIDIA has officially confirmed that they are dropping CUDA support for these GPUs in the next toolkit release. So this is something that they already kind of indicated. They said in a previous update that, hey, you should probably start thinking about this because we're gonna drop support soon. Well, the soon has come. The CUDA 12.9 toolkit is the last major release that will support Maxwell, Pascal, and Volta-based GPUs. So CUDA support will be dead on these graphics cards moving forward. GTX 900 series, GTX 10 series, as well as, again, the Titan V, which very few of you likely have. And if you do, you don't need me telling you this because you are an uber nerd who already knows about all these details. Now, just because they're dropping CUDA support does not mean drivers will stop rolling out for these imminently. There likely will still be a few more driver updates coming out to these graphics cards moving forward, but it does show the writing on the wall that these cards are getting ready to be completely phased out. You will no longer get actual driver updates for these graphics cards for modern games that are coming out. At the very most, you'll get security updates and it's just looking like probably get an RTX 3060 or an RX 7700 XT. Something like that looks to be your best bet in the modern era when it comes to just getting off of what these old cards are like. But if you're still on a GTX 900 series, I, I applaud you because I've had several of them die from their uh, VRMs exploding. Um, so if you're still going strong, congratulations. And you guys went strong in the comments on yesterday's episode of Hot News. So let's go ahead and check those out. Minute saying, Intel please, release with stock, release at a fair price, that is all we ask. It's a lot, apparently. That is a monumental undertaking that you are requesting. I really hope they can pull it off. Then B Tag saying LMAO, Half Life 3 before GTA 6 and Elder Scrolls 6. Again, not confirmed, but it would be hilarious. It would be objectively funny if both. Half-Life 3 and Silk Song released this year, and we don't have Elder Scrolls or GTA 6. And then Critical Dame Age saying, dang it, Brett, you're making me want to start Expedition 33 right before Computex. Do it. 
do it. Worth it. Play it. It's not Steam Deck verified. That's the only issue is that it's not uh, it's not easy to run on low end hardware. Hmm. I wonder if the Legion Go could handle it or like the iNeo 3. I don't know. Get a gaming laptop or something and bring it with you to Computex. It's worth it. It's worth every single second. Oh man. I just played like an extra hour of the game last night because that's all I had time for and I was laughing out loud. I, I had humor going on in my heart. It brought me so much joy just it, experiencing the cutscene and it was also during like a really tense, like, emotional moment, but it wasn't like humor like they do in Marvel movies where it feels like it's shoehorned in and it's kind of just like a, hey, did you notice we told a joke? But it was like true to the characters. It was just beautiful. They're written like actual well-developed characters and I just, I, I, I can't say enough good things about Expedition 33. And then Black Hayate saying, Brett, what happened to your finger? I noticed you have medical tape or something. I hope it's nothing too bad. I always enjoy watching hot news while having my breakfast. All right, I'm gonna tell you guys what happened to my finger. This is a trigger warning. If you are disturbed by things happening to fingernails or uh, blood or any sort of, uh, you know, if you don't like any of that talk, I'll see you tomorrow for hot news. But, uh, it was a freak thing that happened. I was going to uh, reach into my washing machine to grab clothes to put them into the dryer. And you know how washing machines have like holes in the metal to like let the water out as it's spinning? Well, as I was reaching, my fingernail caught on one of the holes and it went <laughs> and uh, my fingernail ripped. Uh, it hurt like the dickens. And so this is just to protect it um, because it's at the top and it's really hard to keep a band-aid on it. So I have a band-aid with medical tape just to stop it from hurting like the dickens. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna be done <laughs> now. Uh, thank you for hearing my story on my finger pain. I will see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News, hopefully again tomorrow.